Hello, everyone, and welcome to Coffee with Cart Horse. For those who don't know me, I am Corin Passion, the fundraiser at the Cart Horse Protection Association, and you are watching our third episode um, of Coffee with Cart Horse, and we are live streaming for the very first time on Facebook. Um, we are at our offices in Epping, and it's incredibly hot because um, we are on the Cape Flats, um, but we are so thrilled to have you joining us tonight. Um, and as they say on YouTube, please like and um, share our page. Um, we, we, we had to look at more innovative ways of, of raising funds, and that's basically how Coffee with Cartels was inspired. And we will be talking about everything equine. Um, but before we start, um, if you have questions for our guest this evening, um, there is a chat um, function on the on the right. Pop your questions in there, and when we are finished with the program, um, we will we will go to your questions. Um, so grab a cup of coffee, sit back, relax, and enjoy the next forty minutes with us. Tonight we'll be talking to Marisda um, Kruger from the Society of Animals in Distress, who heads up the Coal Yard um, Project, which started in two thousand and four and then led to the diamonds um, from the dust from dust project. When Marista qualified as a veterinary um, nurse, she went straight into animal welfare. After working um, in animal welfare for, for 10 years, she decided to move into private practice um, to heal her soul from all the abuse that she had witnessed um, and was exposed to. As Marista says, the universe circled her back into animal welfare and she started um, working with Sid in 2016 as the equine manager for them and she is now in a position to make a real difference in the lives of these working equines and also to help and heal um, and protect the weak. Welcome. We are absolutely thrilled to have you with us this evening on our first live stream on Facebook. Um, and we cannot wait to tell for you to tell us more about this amazing project that you are working with. Thank you very much. Very happy to be here. Brilliant. I'm just going to share the screen over here. There we go. Okay. Um, Marissa, just tell us about the coal, um, the coal Yard Project and where these horses actually come from. So we have quite a unique Coal Yard setup um, as um, we work only in Tembisa where we have four individual Coal Yards. Um, the horses are used to deliver coal to households in place of electricity. Um, so our horses are working really in suburbia, they work in and amongst the taxis, they are on main roads. Um, it's a really high impact area um, where you wouldn't expect to find horses. No, so when we, started, when we started the coal yard project, uh, we had about 350 horses in Tembisa working, um, <clears> which is, th that is a hang of a lot of horses for the, for the area that they were in. Um, and the project really just ran around um, education, training, and assisting these horses. Uh, we had major sponsorships, and we did everything for free. So we would go in, train farriers, 
um, assist with putting up pad. Everything was done for free um, for for at least ten years. Lots of training around handling um, yes. confirmation, those kind of things. Um, because originally we had lots of thoroughbreds, we had lots of um, confirmationally poor animals that that couldn't cope with the environment. Um, and as the years went by, we managed to get the correct type of ponies, smaller, um, more robust animals into the area. Um, yeah. And then by 2016, um, we changed the project um, because we found that it was we were enabling as opposed to empowering. Empowering. So we changed and we started to charge a levy on our services to create a value for the horses. Because mm -hmm. at that stage, you could run your whole business free of charge because animals in distress would assess, do the feet, do the harnessing. Um, do the, mares would come, the, the mares would come into our facility for foaling. Um, and we then changed, uh, which was quite difficult. Um, but we then started saying, no, you know what? There's a there's a cost involved to this. So it's still massively subsidized. But if your horse comes in for a colic, you're going to pay 500 Rand for it to be treated. Yes. And with that process, many of the coal yard owners chose to move into mechanized things. They bought trucks, they bought buckies. And so the numbers have come down. And um, at the moment, we have for this breeding season, 27 coal yard horses working. Unbelievable, from 350, it's remarkable. Absolutely, absolutely, and they are all microchipped. We know them by name. Um, when they fall down, we are there, we vaccinate those foals. So we're really on top of it. And yes, it's still a hard life for any horse, but mm. the owners that have remained are the owners that have taken responsibility. No. So that is oh, where yeah. our project is. Marissa, you, you, you touched on some of the services that you that you offer these coal yard horses. Um, but what are the main issues um, for these for these um, coal yard horses? So what we see predominantly is colics um, because they are free grazing um, on rubbish dumps. So plastic bags, you know, the horses, the people throw away bread in a bag. So from a very young age, these horses learn that food lives in plastic. So we see a, a huge amount of colics coming in. The other thing is MVAs because they're moving in and amongst the taxis. Um, there are trains, there are, there, there are a lot of um, injuries, um, high trauma injuries happening. We at the moment see no harness injuries at all because our coal yard owners have been trained. And because of that, we've been able to collaborate with SPCA and it's now not a case of not knowing better. So if if a horse has got a harness injury, we're in the position to say, we spent 10 years telling you this is not okay. We need um, to know that now. Absolutely. Because I think there's a, there's a problem when you draw the line and you say, you know what, now actually you need to take responsibility. So if we and find no harness excuses. injuries, yeah, the horses come in and they rest for three months. That handicaps the, the person's business for three months. And we don't confiscate. We're not law enforcement at all. But we are in the position to mobilize law enforcement. And I think that causes a really good balance within our coal yards. Sure. Um, the next few <clears throat> pictures that we chose, there were so many to choose from. Um, can you just talk us through a few of these, these pic um, pictures and what's, and what's happening in, in, in them? Yeah, this, this one is a, a colleague. This was Steam Ranger. Um, he was also the very first horse that you saw in the, in the, in the cart, the grey. Um, he was born in the coal yard. Um, he worked in the coal yard for about seven years. He came in for a colic. Um, we spent three days with him, um, but we, we don't do surgery. Um, and when we are unable to control their pain, we put them down. So he mm -hmm. did really well and then took a turn for the, for the worst. So Steam Ranger, unfortunately, was put down. But this was him just on a drip. Um, he was actually just relaxing there because the coal yard ponies are so used to lying down and taking a nap. So that's, um, he actually was just napping 
there on yeah. his little drip line. But yeah, we, we did lose him. And feeling safe to lie down. That's such a pity. And then yeah. this, this, these yeah. kind of injuries this is, that looks so... Oh. Yeah, this, this specific horse is captain. Um, yes. He was... So from time to time what happens is people decide that perhaps owning a coal yard pony is a good business. So this was a cattle owner who at an auction bought 20 head of cattle and a set of horses and decided, well, maybe he'll just do some coal yard. So he hadn't been in our training process, um, knew very little about horses and gave the horse, the specific horse to children to work. Um, and that was actually a Pelham uh, and the shaft had broken off. So I think we don't realize how much damage we do when we donate our broken bits to yes. these ponies. Absolutely. So people, you know, they won't put it in their precious darling thoroughbred's mouth, but they, they don't donate it to the charity. Into the charity. And I think that's exactly what happened, that this was a donated mm -hmm. mainstream bit. Um, the, the, the shaft was broken off, and because of the, the rough handling, it had actually gone through the mouth. So there was an actual hole that you could put your finger through the cheek. Um, the owner, once he was brought in for this, was horrified. He couldn't believe it. Um, and he continued to work his horses for probably another six months and then decided that horses That's were it. too hard and complicated um, and the horse was surrendered. So he, he's fine. He no longer works. Oh, that's so good news. This is um, Jealous. Jealous was, this was a injury in a cart by a taxi. So she was hit in the cart while delivering. Um, this is a good owner. You can see from the wound, fresh, fresh wound. So the minute the injury occurred, they were on the on the phone. The ambulance went out. We loaded her, um, and she made a full recovery. She's back working um, and is doing absolutely fine. That's just after her bandaging and sort of because she went down in the cart. So there was some other abrasions, but that one was obviously the worst. She she looks like a a bit of a war horse there, but but survived and pulled through. Thank goodness yeah. for for you guys being there. And, yeah. your, and, and, your, and the thing and your is, quick response. And it's critical that the ponies that do cope stay there. Yes. Because you just create a vacuum. It doesn't help mm -hmm. that you take her out because then tomorrow they bring in a thoroughbred who can't cope with that. Exactly. Um, so we really do try to keep the ones that are there there. And less the they people know how to work. And they know the environment and they understand. Mm -hmm. Who are the good people? Who are the bad people? How the traffic works? You know, the young horses that come in there, they don't make it because they just can't understand the system. No, no. Uh, this is an injury from a donkey. Um, so because our coal yard, our own coal yard, is pretty much under control, we are often called in by other organizations to assist with equine. So this was a set of donkeys out Pretoria Way um, that we were asked to come and help with harnessing. So... Uh, the team went out, but when we got there, it was not fixable on site. Um, the, horse, the, the donkeys were not evenly paired. They were, they were drawing a cut-off bucky that had its whole diff and suspension and everything, and they were transporting um, building sand. So, so three little donkeys, you know, heavy, your bucky heavy, can't heavy do load. that. Yeah, so um, the decision was made to bring them into the hospital and they are currently in hospital and they'll they'll stay with us for another three or four months to pick up weight. Um, and then we will start the education process there. Um, but it won't it won't be a 10 year thing because we can't yeah. actually get out there. It's too far. So realistically, these donkeys will go back. The owner will receive instruction as to what mm. can and can't happen. And if he doesn't contravene, we will just um, we'll just bring law enforcement in. Yeah, yeah. That was sure. the the second donkey in that second group. Um, she was she was the tallest one, so she carried all the weight oh, no. over the over the top of her back just because of how the harnesses were fitted. Um, so yeah, she had abscesses coming out for for weeks out of that spine. Um, and the sad thing is, the, the oldest one of these three donkeys was four years old. So babies, oh, absolute babies. Absolute you know, you look babies. at that and you, you think it's a 20-year-old donkey, but they were no. just babies. This was the youngest one. He was only two. 
Um, and from the high impact work on the tar roads, he actually lost the front of his hoof wall. It just fell off because his, his little feet weren't hard enough to handle oh. the, the, the pressure. The yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's the incredible rescue of Silver Lining. Um, I just absolutely love it when a community comes together and, and um, like I said, save this, this precious deserving soul. So tell us about this, this, this rescue and also what the owner did at the end is also definitely worth mentioning. So Silver um, was one of the coal yard ponies and she went missing for two days. Owner couldn't find her anyway, anywhere. And then late one afternoon found her in a manhole. So what we suspect happened is that the manhole cover had been stolen and while grazing, she must have stepped back and then fallen into the manhole bum first. Um, what you don't realize that this, these manholes are extremely reinforced. They double brick walls, they concreted pillars, they've got wire reinforcement. So it's like a, a tomb. You, you can't actually understand yeah. how well it's enforced. So what happened is that call came through. We went out, we assessed it. There was no ways that we could get her out. So watered and fed her for the night and then started phoning. And as luck would have it, there was a fire rescue team that was having a seminar in Madrand. So we contacted them and said, look, you know, it's all going well that you're doing the seminar, but how about you just come do some on-site training? <laughs> so we ended up with like 30 firemen on site. Oh my goodness, uh, that's amazing. We organized the back actor. We had to, the, the pit that I'm standing in, they had to dig that whole side wall out and then jackhammer wow. through the wall. Um, I was lowered into the hole and we tranquilized her because she's only an 18-month-old filly at the time. 
and we had to cover her with like fire protective gear because the angle grinders were actually putting the sparks onto her. So it, it was this was the the end of a six hour rescue uh, when she, she was absolutely traumatized. She was she was catatonic. So she I think she'd actually decided that she'd already died. So she was very traumatized and colic the next day. Um, continued to colic for three days after that, um, but we managed to pull her through. Sorry. And um, the owner then decided that it was, he'd watched the whole thing. He couldn't believe that so much effort would be done it's for an animal. One. You know, it, it's yes. not something that they would ever see. Um, no. And he then made the decision that the, the coal yard was too um, dangerous for horses to live. And he had a herd of five. And he then surrendered his entire herd yes. to animals in distress yeah. and discontinued working with the coal yard. Yeah. Wow. That's such an amazing story. That really is. And and this is silver silver lining after getting lots of love and, and hugs and kisses. Yeah. <laughs> so what happened with Silver is she then came into our Diamonds from Dust project. Yes. She was only 18 yes. months old. So she grew up with us. She was then backed. Um, and she was eventually homed to a um, special needs riding facility that works with autistic hey. kids. And yeah, so she has a, a very important job with children. Um, and, and she's their prize pony. If you speak to them, they, they cannot stop raving about her ability to look after these kids. But it's, it's, it's amazing the, the healing power that that horses Absolutely. do have but with, with human beings. I mean, you, you, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's very, very special. And, and she's definitely found a niche in life. So this little mare standing there, that's Bonnie. Um, and she was one of the other uh, mares from Silver's um, herd. Um, yeah. So she also found a little girl um, and they are competing in Sinisa. Yes. So. <laughs> Um, Marista, the, the coal yard project led to, we've mentioned the diamonds in the dust projects um, for where the surrendered horses go to. Um, tell us a little bit more about this remarkable um, um, project. Yeah, so basically what happened is because our coal yard numbers were coming down and the owners were surrendering horses to us, we ended up with 40 horses on the farm and nowhere yeah. to go with them. So we then started a process of uh, re-backing these horses and preparing them for a second life because a lot of them were young horses. Um, and yes, we needed a lot of them were like 18 months old. Uh, and that's, that's, that's very young. Very young horses because, you know, the life expectancy of a coal yard pony is not 20 years. No. So, you know, by the time they break down, it's, it's early still. Um, mm -hmm. And, yeah, so we, we then decided that we would – evaluate them, they get veterinary checked, and then they go into our project and we we work with their spirits and we, we build them up and all our backing is done bitless. Um, and yeah, then we, we match them up to people. So it is a rehoming process, but it's under contract. Um, and we started the Diamonds from Dust in 2017. We currently have 54 diamonds out there doing their wow. thing. Uh, and, yeah, we have 20 on the farm in the process. In the process. Wonderful. Yeah. And this is one of your diamonds in the dust successes. <laughs> this yeah. is Dusty. I mean, Maverick, sorry, Maverick. Maverick yeah. So this is Maverick. Maverick was um, removed by the SPCA. Um, he came from one of the long-standing coal yard owners. Um but we found him in harness at 18 months. So because all the education had been done, we didn't have to issue warnings and reissue mm -hmm. warnings. So we called in the SPCA and he was removed um, and then came into the project, um, was eventually home to a little girl who now competes very successfully and he's actually taken quite a few first prizes at the, um, the national champs. So that's Dusty now, um, Maverick now. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> now we've um, changed their names, yeah. You mentioned um, you, you you don't have the uh, the authority to confiscate horses and you said you work very closely with the SPCA. 
um, which 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 can basically come in and and confiscate horses on your behalf. So that's a great yeah. relationship for you guys to have. Yeah. So the I come from law enforcement, so yes. I spent the first. 10 years of my life doing this. So it, it really helps in terms of building relationships with the SPCA because often people say, oh, just take it away. And it's not that simple. It's really hard no. for them. Everything needs to be in place. But mm -hmm. we have everything in place when we do the training. So, you know, now we've taught you all of this, sign here. Now we've taught you all of this. So all of those things later will serve as warnings and can yeah. be used in prosecution and and the SPCA does not remove for us because remember if they remove horses it has to go to them so they will assist us assist and me. generally the owner would rather than be prosecuted surrender the pony okay wonderful and that's how they come to us because the SPCA obviously don't hand out horses that have been confiscated no of course not yeah. And then there's the story of Dusty, also another wonderful success story. And once again, the challenges that these horses face in the Tembisa area. Yeah. So this was a hit by train. Um, we see quite a few deaths because they're walking on open railway tracks. Um, so often the horses are hit by train. He was obviously just hit in passing. Um, also, young Colt, when he came in, um, the owner decided that because of that injury, he wouldn't be suitable as a draft horse down the line. Um, and rather than paying the veterinary, decided to surrender him. Um, so he came into the project and, yeah, then a lady came who was looking for a 20-year-old mare as a companion for her 25-year-old mare. Um, and she left with an 18-month-old colt. <laughs> And um, that's him now. He's he's had a second prize prize at Horse of the Year, um, and Dusty is rising five now. So he's still very much a baby. That was him at Horse of the Year as an in hand as a three year old. Well, these stories are so heartwarming, Marissa. Sort of from the from the coal yards, the you know hard work, working, pulling such a heavy load, and and basically what's the word, educating the, the, the owners to to know that going down the line is going to cost them a fortune to look after and it's just rather better to surrender them and they can go on to, to, to better parches or, or competing or being a companion and, and basically being treated like like that they, they, they should be. Absolutely. Um, the other thing that I'd like to mention is we also, when we get rid of our vehicles, we will always give the coal yard owners first option. So my oh, good wow. coal yard owners will have first option on buying one of our retiring vehicles. Yes. And slowly we then move them across onto that and, and we'll say, all right, well, you know, if because what we don't want is the coal yard, those ponies being passed on to the next owner. Of course. Um, so we try to get them out, but uh, we that works quite well when you can give them an alternative mechanism to yeah. make money um but that doesn't work for everywhere because you know cars eat petrol they, which do. they do isn't always what they want yeah. making you know a living with with collecting coal and and delivering coal it, it, it is it is a form of business and when yes. they could see the benefits of you know these horses not sort of being you know work, working so hard and 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 having a bucky which would be which would be much better for them and absolutely like and as yeah. it starts you know as the first coal yard owner moves into mechanizing then the other ones can see that he's doing double the loads and whatever and and slowly it just spreads over and and ultimately we'd like to see no draft horses in tembisa um mm. but it is a process um but i can honestly say the owners that we have now are doing the best they possibly can with what they've had wonderful Marissa, what are your plans um, for plans and visions for the next for the next year? So we are very liquid in terms of what we're able to do, and we really move with with what's needed. So right now, with COVID and all of that happening, we're finding that there are a lot of mainstream households that can't afford their horses any longer, mm -hmm. um, and. We, we're really trying to assist that. So there's quite a bit of us 
saying, all right, well, your pony can come into our project. Um, we can help with veterinary. We can help with advice. Um, obviously, all of this works within a budget and we can't help everybody everywhere. Um, but certainly, I think our equine support unit, which really was designed for horses other than coal yard ponies, uh, I think we'll take the forefront for the next uh, year or so, just as we try to cope with the, the COVID impact. Yes. Wow. And then lastly, Marisa, um, what can people do to support you and your cause? What what, what help is, is, is needed um, by animals in distress? Yeah. So we feed 20 ponies. <laughs> so... <Goodness>. Um, <laughs> Yeah, what works really well is a lot of our um, competitive riders have a standing order So at our local feed shop. So when they buy the 30 bales for the month, they will tag on an extra three bales for animals in distress. Um, so as they do their payment, the those, that, that load just builds up. And midfeeds will then deliver the grass to us. So grass is a big one for us. Um, but certainly superpowers. If you've got any superpowers, um, acupuncture, chiropractor, um, horse whispering, natural horsemanship, any of those things. Um, we have so many diverse ponies needing different things all the time. So mm -hmm. we don't take on volunteers that it's not a petting zoo. You can't no. come and groom the ponies. We got the same thing with our recovery and rehabilitation centers. You can't just feed carrots and kissy kissy all day. These horses need to be desensitized, as you said, rehabilitated, you know, and and be ready to be able to, you know, find their forever homes um, going forward. Yeah. Yeah. So we're very structured. I mean, we all our things. All the horses have like phase one, phase two, phase three, and they can't move on to phase two. So like phase one, if I can't stick my fingers in your ears, you can't have a bridle. So yeah. <laughs> so that we don't skip steps. Um, so we, we do use different levels of people. So I, I do have people that come here and plat ponies all day and all night because it's a pretty little pony and that's what its life's going to be some little girl's going to put ribbons in its hair and it needs yes. to learn to like that um so so it's all kinds of things but it's not the also all our work riders are committed so they it's not you know you float in and pet the ponies one day you're like. the next day you're not whatever you feel like it it's a commitment to that horse yes because they get allocated so they don't just fiddle they, they have this is your ground pony this is your riding pony um, and they work with them. And then we have specialists that will sit in. So we have uh, we have a person who does natural horsemanship. So the, the, the people will work their pony and then they have a hiccup. And then Charles will come in and do three or four lessons and get them over that hurdle. Um, and so we move through it. But certainly if you have T-Touch or any of the, if you have special powers, we, we definitely you. want you in here. Yeah. Wow. Marissa, your story and, and your and your projects and what you do is absolutely phenomenal. It is absolutely, yeah, blown away and the success of it. And keep on doing what you're doing. And if anybody wants to contact Marisda, um, you can go to their website um, at animalsindistress.org and please like their Facebook page so you can see the amazing work that they are doing. And like I said, get in touch with Marisda if you do have any um, expertise that you can offer, but remember you need to be committed um, and I'm sure they would absolutely love to have you. Um, that's basically the the end of our of our program, but please join us again on the 8th of April where we will be speaking to um, Penny James, who is the manager of ears, who look after the donkeys in the Grayson area. Um, so thank you for joining us. Keep safe. And until next time, good night. Bye, everyone. Oh, sorry, sorry, I forgot the questions. <laughs> I always forget the questions. That's the second time I've done that. Oh, my goodness. Sorry, there's a question from um, Dar Daria. She would like to know, would equine unit be able to support informal horse owners? Um with AHS vaccines. Marissa, is there something that you guys could do? 
So I can tell you that in the past we did. We, we vaccinated all our coal yard ponies, um, but that is a, a huge expense because it's not something that we can get subsidized. Okay. So um, I think area would be relevant because, I mean, in the past I would go out and we'd get all our ponies together and we would vaccinate. Now we require owners to pay, not the full amount, but you pay 150 rand to have a horse sickness vaccine. Yeah. Okay. So it could be done, but we'd need to look at area and sponsorship. <coughs> Sorry. No worries. Um, okay, Daria, you, you can go to, like I said, um, um, animalsindistress.org.za and you can get in touch with Marisda. Um, it's, it's, it's on our screen and um, you can <clears throat> take it further from there. Do we have any more questions or, or comments for Marisda? I don't see any. Okay. Well, I think <laughs> I can finally say goodbye. But if you, if you, like I said, if you do have any questions or any afterthoughts, you can also contact me. It's Karin, K A R I N, at carthorse.org.za. And hope you enjoyed this, our first live streaming. Um, on Facebook and um, thank you once again to Marisda it was it was an amazing talk and the inside of what you do is is unbelievable but thanks everyone keep safe and I hope to see you on the 8th of April good night now bye bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye.